After being delayed for a week, Edith and Deities episode 8 dropped earlier than expected, and I just got a chance to watch it last night. This was an excellent episode in terms of the action and animation. The fights between Emperor Takashita and Hayato and Ren and Brandy were really entertaining. MAPPA has really nailed the art and animation for this show and the scale of the fights are exactly what I expected it to be. In addition to that, we got to see a side of Ren that we rarely get to see. Ren is vulnerable and overwhelmed with emotion when she talks to Over M and starts making connections to her beloved grandfather. Those were fantastic scenes and the background music is something that definitely deserves recognition too. Oh, and before I forget, Ren's crying, man, the voice acting in general is just really good in this episode. All that good stuff aside, what I really wanted to discuss today is the character of Giltina. Giltina, or Gil for short, is the nun that got sexually assaulted at the end of the first episode. Near the end of this week's episode, there was an interesting new development. Since all requirements were met, a new Edithin was summoned, but this one is identical to Gil. Since Gil's dots were the strongest at the time of the summoning, the Edithin has many of her qualities, including her looks, personality, and even name. This is similar to how Paula can communicate with birds and move swiftly due to the dots of birds being the most potent when she was summoned. The same can be said for Over M, who is comprised mostly of the dots of the dying demons, but as we've seen this week, the strongest of those dots seem to originate from Ren's grandfather. While calling the new Edithin a clone of Gil would technically be inaccurate, it's worth mentioning that Hayato and Prontea immediately mistaken her for the human woman. Hayato being confused totally makes sense because he wasn't around when Easley was explaining how Edithin were generated to Paula. Anyway, I love what the author Amahara has done here. Basically, he's taken an idea from biblical texts, the fact that we're made in God's image, and reversed it. Giltina has unknowingly generated a god in her own image. To put it another way, it's a god in the image of man. Giltina has been through a lot, enduring sexual abuse daily from the Zabo Empire soldiers while being in prison alongside others that have suffered the same fate. We've seen how strong-willed and devoted to her faith the character has been despite the atrocities she's witnessed firsthand. We've also seen her kind of given the pleasure a little bit. In this week's episode, we finally see her get fed up with her own powerlessness and her desire to be able to help others became part of the catalyst needed for the generation of a new Edithin. She's now seeing what real gods are like and was appalled by how Prontea casually killed a demon to save her. Let me just say I love Prontea's response to how she criticized how he killed it to protect her. Like what was he supposed to do in her eyes? Give it a chance to fight back? What would have been the point? He protected her, yet Gil was upset. The idea that demons and humans can coexist seems naive based off of everything established so far. I've seen many people online debating about the morality of the Edithin and pondering who the bad guys really are in this situation. I've actually seen a few people arguing that the Edithin are somehow worse than the demons. Did some of y'all forget that these demons are from the same warmongering nation that let their troops sexually abuse women and then later imprison them? I saw one post yesterday suggesting that Takashita had more humanity than the Edithins. In addition to him looking out for Gil and the other women, there was also that moment before he died where he thinks about his family and decides to not launch the missiles as Over M suggested. While I love to see all the different reactions out there, it's never been a question to me who the villains or heroes of this story are. What a lot of people need to keep in mind is the fact that the Edithin don't operate with the same morals and ethics that humans have. As long as humanity isn't in danger of becoming extinct and the environment isn't being ruined, they really don't care what happens to a few humans. They kill the demons in order to preserve human life, plain and simple. I'm paraphrasing here, but shout out to the person who said this. The Edithin aren't the heroes we wanted. They're just the ones we got. As I stated in my review for the first volume of the manga, the author has come up with a very unique depiction of gods with the Edithin. This new Edithin equivalent of Gil has the potential to really shake things up. It could end up being the ideal version of what Gil believed a god to be and likely have a more human set of beliefs. I can imagine that it will be hard for Easley or Prontea to indoctrinate the new Edithin to their way of thinking. When someone is getting abused, Easley and the others might not bat an eye, but Edith and Giltina would probably want to rush out and help them. I'm excited to see where the story goes from here since even though the war is over, Miku and the others are still out there. 
The anime has now surpassed the manga, so the next three episodes will be new territory for manga readers. Anyway, let me know what you guys thought about this week's episode, and thank you guys for watching. I'm out of here. Peace.